Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're watching this, chances are you just got your hands on a brand new iPad, congrats. Today, I'm going to share the best iPad features that you should try first, from how to customize how everything looks to some cool ways to take the user experience to the next level. Let's get into it. I'll quickly show you how to set up an iPad. I'm using an iPad mini 7 for demonstration, but this should work on all iPad models. Power the iPad on by pressing the power button on the top edge. Select your language and region, connect to Wi-Fi, optionally set up Face ID and Touch ID, sign in with your Apple ID, opt whether to restore from a backup or set up as a new iPad, optionally enable Siri, review app and data settings, decide whether you want Apple Pay set up, and that's basically it. You'll wanna check whether you're eligible for a software update before doing anything else, as some of the features I'm gonna go over may require the latest iPad OS software version. Before I continue on, I wanted to point out that I've linked this exact iPad in the description if you're interested in checking it out. But more importantly, I wanted to remind you to subscribe to this channel so that you never miss another Setup Essentials video like this one. How to customize the look of your apps and layout on iPad could literally be its own video, which if you'd wanna see that, let me know. But I think from the jump, customizing the appearance of apps is a great place to start. So here's what your apps look like by default. You're going to press and hold anywhere on the display. In the corner, tap edit, and then customize to choose the app size, light or dark mode, or add a tint to all the apps. Bonus points if you match it to your wallpaper. And then if you go back to the edit tab, you can also add widgets that are relevant to the information you like to see, or with the apps wiggling, you can add more of them to your dock down here. Lots of options to play with here. Have fun with it. Not as fun, but still pretty important to do right when you get a new iPad, set up Find My. Open the settings app, tap your name, then tap Find My. You can here decide if you wanna share your iPad's location with any trusted contacts, but more importantly, tap Find My iPad and then turn on Find My iPad. Now, if you happen to lose your iPad, leave it on an airplane or anywhere, you can use another Apple device you own to mark it as lost, track it down, and hopefully get it returned. Another thing that has more to do with appearance and usability is changing the font size of your iPad. Changing the font size on your iPad can help make text easier to read. Open the settings app, scroll down and tap on display and brightness, tap text size, drag the slider to adjust the text size, and then sliding it to the right will increase the font size, while sliding it to the left will decrease it. Another thing you could do is head over to accessibility settings, display and text size, and toggle on the bold text option. There are a couple of app specific changes you can make, but these are the best for system wide implementation. If you're cool with the iPad keyboard layout by default, that's great, but there are a few different options you should try or maybe fix in case you've enabled one of these accidentally. So touch and hold the keyboard button and slide your finger to split. Release it to have the keyboard now cut down the middle on either side. To go back to normal, just hit that keyboard button again and click Merge. This is also how you can turn on the floating keyboard. Same thing, just select Floating. The iPad Control Center is a popular feature. It basically gives you access to a bunch of quick settings you might want easily accessible. You get this layout by default, but you can actually rearrange it however you like touch and hold one of the icons, then you can move it around wherever. To add more controls, tap add a control. You'll get to choose from this gallery here. You can add HomeKit devices or just tools that you'd like to have handy. Now we're moving on to ways to take your iPad to the next level. The biggest thing for sure is pairing an Apple Pencil. I'll also link this below, but it's sort of like an advanced stylus designed for iPad with super low latency. You can use it to tap around, but it's best used for note taking, where it can actually clean up your handwriting. With Scribble enabled, you can write with the Apple Pencil in any text area and your words will be automatically converted to typed text. If you got your iPad specifically as a student or for this kind of productivity use, I'd definitely pick up an Apple Pencil. Again, I've linked the one I'm using in the description. At the time we're recording this, every iPad except one model has Apple intelligence features, so chances are your new iPad has them. Here's how you're gonna check them out. Go into settings and enable Apple intelligence. From there, try writing tools to help improve your writing. It can proofread, rewrite, and change the tone of what you've written. Also check out the new and improved Siri, which we actually did a dedicated video on if you haven't watched that yet. 
There's a lot more that's available to try with Apple Intelligence on iPad and iPad OS, but it was in fact difficult to narrow down this video to just a few of the best iPad features overall. So if you found this video helpful, let me know if we should do a part two or a deep dive specific to Apple Intelligence on iPad. That's it for me. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.